In the stories of all of the prophets, we keep coming back and seeing the same thing. There are those people who wake up to the truth and they want to obey Allah. And then there are those people who don't want to obey Allah. In another story, and I really like these stories because they help me. Ever since I was a small boy, I've heard the stories. But sometimes I got confused in the story. I didn't understand it. When I came in Islam and I found all the stories of the prophets, the Qisas al then I understood because the message is still there. It's not changed, altered, or corrupted. Would you like me to tell you one? Well, this is a story about people who also disobeyed Allah. And they had a prophet. They had a messenger. And they were close to the place where Ibrahim salam, started from. This is Iraq. And there was a place called Ur of the Chaldees. And that's the mountain range that's there even today. And the city that they were in was called Nineveh. Can you say Nineveh? Nineveh. Yeah, that's Arabic, but also it's called Nineveh. Nineveh? Nineveh. Yeah, well, you can say Nineveh because you have the V in your language, but Arabic doesn't have the V. Doesn't really matter the name of the city, does it? What matters is what happened there. Now, they didn't get a flood, and they didn't get rain of fire. In fact, what happened to them was really strange. Their prophet was named what? Eunice. Can you say Eunice? Eunice. In English, they call him Jonah. I don't know how they got Jonah out of Eunice, but that's his name, Eunice. Alayhi salam. Peace be upon him. Allah inspired him as he inspired the other prophets. And he went to them. And he explained to them, and he talked to them. And if you remember the story of Nuh, alayhi salam, he gave good examples, and he told them. And only a few people believed Nuh, alayhi salam. But how many people listened to Yunus? Zero. Nobody listened to him. And he kept talking and talking, and just like Nuh, alayhi salam. And then he told them about the warning, just like Lut, alayhi salam, that Allah's punishment is going to come on this city, this village. It's going to be destroyed. Allah is going to send punishment. And they were saying, okay, bring it. Who cares? Same as before. Every time the people do the same thing. But then what happened? This time the prophet was supposed to stay and give the message. But he ran away. He said, I'm not, these people are not listening. I'm not going to stay around and be part of this. They won't come to the right belief. So... He got a boat. There was a boat leaving. He said, I want to go on here. Give me a ticket. On the boat. Away they went. Out into the sea. And when they were out in the sea, Allah made a big storm come. A big storm. And it was so bad that the ocean was throwing water over the top of the boat. And the boat was going way down. And the ocean looked like mountains. And then they'd be up here. And then they'd be down there. And the people were so scared. And the boat was rocking back and forth like this. To the extent the people were scared. We're going to drown. We're going to die. Somebody on this boat must be really bad for this to happen. We never saw such a storm as this ever. Then they were deciding who to throw overboard. You're the guy. No, not me. No, you. You're evil. No, you're bad. It's you. It, you're bad luck. It's it. I know they went through this thing. And finally, Yunus alayhi salam said, it's me. I'm the one. They went, you're the only good guy on the whole boat. We're not going to throw you over. And he said, no, it's really me. They said, no, 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 let's cast lots and see who goes. Now, it's kind of like, you know what? When you have some straws and you put them in your hand, one is shorter than the rest, and they would put it out. Okay, you take one, you take one, you take one. And who got the shortest one? Eunice. They said, no, 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 let's do it again. They got some more, and they put them in. And said, okay, you take one, you take one. Who got the short one? Eunice. They said, well, we don't like to throw this guy over, but it's what it looks like. Now, by the way, they didn't say they believed in Allah. They believed in good luck. Anyway, they threw him over. Boom, splash. As soon as he went overboard, Allah made the storm stop. And it settled down, and they went, oh, and sailed off. In the meantime, what happened to Eunice? A big whale. Now, you know what a whale is? Yeah. Is a whale a fish? Yeah. No, it's not. Whales are not fish. Whales are animals. Whales breathe air. 
and they give birth to a live baby. Whereas fish, they breathe through the water and they lay eggs. So whales are not fish. It was an animal. And by the way, that hole on top of their head, they breathe through that. They get air in there, and when they come up, that's why they go, and they blow everything out like that. You see them do that? That's when they're catching their breath. Kind of like you hold water under, have you ever done that? Be underwater, hold your breath, hold your breath, and you come up, you go, that's what the whale's doing. Anyway, the whale swallowed poor old Jonah, and now here he is, peace be upon him, inside of this whale. Now, do you imagine he was in bad shape? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even if a person's in prison, in a prison, which is bad, at least there's some room to move around. He didn't have any room in there, did he? Even in a prison, there'd be a little bit of light, wouldn't there? There was no light at all where he was. In a prison, you could eat something. What is Jonah going to eat inside a whale? Maybe some dead fish? I don't know. But it was pretty bad all the way around. And it wasn't just for a couple of minutes either. It was for a long time. Some people said days and nights and days and nights that he was there in that whale. And by the way, in a prison, at least you can breathe and live. But inside a whale, the whale's digesting you. And that was the condition that he was in, being digested even by this whale for all this time, all this time. Then Allah inspired him, and this is the part that I didn't know until I read it in the Quran. It's the most beautiful story. It's in chapter 20, Surah Taha, if you want to look it up, I think. You'll find it's a beautiful saying, because this Yunus, what he said, La ilaha illa ante subhanaka ini kuntum minidhalameen. What does that mean? He realized this, where he was, he didn't blame Allah. He knew better than to blame Allah, didn't he? He said, only you, Allah, are the one worthy to be worshipped. Just you, Allah. All the worship is for you. The glory is for you. Huh? And for sure, I'm the one that did the wrong thing to myself. Can you say that? La ilaha. La ilaha. Illa ante supanaka. Illa ante supanaka. What's the rest of it? Very good. You guys are pretty sharp on this stuff. You know what? When you go to Islamic school, you learn a lot, don't you? It's good, isn't it? So what happened next? As soon as he said that, Allah made that whale go. And it went whoop and uh, spit him out where? Right on the dry land. He was back. I imagine he was a bit dirty, too. What do you think? <laughs> but he was back. And he was like, Whew, wow. And he went into the whale alive, and he came out alive. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? And when he got back to his village, he went to the people. Guess what he found? Were the people destroyed by the flood? Nope. Destroyed by a fire? Nope. They weren't destroyed at all. You know why? Because every one of them accepted the belief, and they became believers while he was gone. They did, because when he left, they went, hey, what's that crazy guy has been running around here telling us all about the end and everything? And then somebody said, you know what? He's gone. He ran away. You know what? Maybe it is going to happen. That's probably why he left. Guys, wait. Let's wake up. You know, maybe this is what happened. And anyway, they decided, we better believe. We better believe in Allah. We better believe in that messenger. And we better do what Allah wants us to do. They became believers. And when he came back, he was like, huh? They're all believers. This teaches us a huge, huge lesson about conveying the message, telling other people about the message. It means if you warn the people or if you don't warn the people, it's all the same to the people because they'll believe or they won't believe according to Allah. Your job is only to tell the truth. Tell the people, but if they don't accept it, so? Many messengers before didn't get accepted either. But if they believe, that's not from you either. That's from Allah. It is Allah and only Allah who guides to the truth. And whoever Allah guides, 
nobody will misguide them. But whoever Allah lets go astray to be lost, then nobody can guide them to the truth. Did you know that? Yeah. So I want to think about that for a minute and realize that this message that comes from the story of Yunus, alayhi salam, Jonah, peace be upon him, this is a story that carries a double message. First, don't disobey Allah because you could suffer in this life and in the next life. Second, don't think you can guide the people because you can't, even if you're a prophet. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was told the same exact thing. In the Quran, Allah told Muhammad, salam, you don't guide the people. You'll find it in chapter 4. You do not guide who you love, but it's Allah who guides whoever he wants to. But you can sure tell them, and you can pray for them, and say, oh Allah, guide the people. Guide us, guide all of us. And we say it every day in our prayer, by the way. Did you know what we say in the prayer every day? We say, Edina Saratu Mustaqim. What does that mean? Allah, guide us to the straight path. And that's my dua for all of us right now. Amin. Amin. MashaAllah. You'll find it in chapter 4. You do not guide who you love, but it's Allah who guides whoever he wants to. But you can sure tell them, and you can pray for them, and say, oh Allah, guide the people. Guide us, guide all of us. And we say it every day in our prayer, by the way. Did you know what we say in the prayer every day? We say, Edina Saratu Mustaqim. What does that mean? Allah, guide us to the straight path. And that's my dua for all of us right now. Amin. Amin. MashaAllah. Shall we now take some questions? Maybe you have a question or something you'd like to talk about because we covered a lot of ground today. I want to start with the girls. I like girls, by the way. Go ahead. How many babies you know, in the In the whale. Yeah. Yeah? By the way, whale is called what in Arabic? Hood. Hood. I thought it was hoot. The first time I heard it, they said hoot. I said, hoot, like you hoot the horn? They said, no, 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 hood. I said, oh, okay, hood. How many days was he in the hood? Good question. According to some scriptures, it says three days and three nights. But these are old scriptures, you can't verify. According to some that we know from Islam, even longer. Some people said 40 days and 40 nights. But I think what's important is not how long, but I think what's important is the conclusion that came to Eunice after he was in there when he said, La ilaha illante subhanaka ni kuntu minadalameen. I think that's the most important point. It was for me because I didn't really care how many days. I don't want to be in a whale for even three minutes, do you? No, or 40 seconds. I just want to get out of that deal. The best way, obey Allah. Good question, though. And I'm glad you brought it up. Who else has a question? Okay, we'll take one from a boy. In the story of who peace be upon him, was there a flood worldwide? According to old scriptures, they said it covered the whole earth and everything drowned. But according to some, they said, no, it was only local in a certain area. So this is a good question. I don't think it really matters. What matters is that the people didn't obey and they got drowned. Everything they knew was underwater. Because you could say, well, maybe all of Europe went underwater. You might say all of Arabia went underwater. Maybe the whole continent went underwater. But what about the other side of the earth? What about where the Americas are? And there are stories, by the way, just in case you didn't know this, there are stories all around the world about an ancient flood that came at one time. Even in South America, they have stories of a big flood that happened centuries and centuries ago. They have stories in Arabia of a big flood that came a long time ago. Again, like I said, the most important thing to realize is that all the world that they knew was underwater. And the reason that we need to know the story is not about how much water there was, but what happens when you disobey and disbelieve in the law. But it's a good question. Thank you. Who else has a question like this? Ladies, I think you have a question, huh? You have a question? Why did the people throw Yunus Salam in the water? Why did they throw Yunus in the water? They were superstitious. They had believed in omens. They didn't, it wasn't because they believed in Allah, but they had superstitions about things. If certain things happened, they used to believe different things about it. 
For instance, if they saw a group of birds and they want to know, should I go this way, should I go that way? Maybe should I buy a cow today or sell a cow today? I want to know. Different things. They see a group of birds flying and they say, okay, do the birds go to the right? Then I'll do this. But if they go to the left, I'll do that. It's superstition. Birds fly where they're going to fly. And so they had these superstitions and they believed that somebody on the boat was evil or bad luck, more like bad luck than anything. And that's why they wanted to start throwing people overboard. Another thing that people used to do a long time ago, when anything bad happened, they used to throw innocent people into the volcano to burn up. They particularly liked to take a young girl and said, let's take her as a sacrifice to the god of the volcano or the god of the sun or something, and throw her in there. Okay, and now we'll have good crops next year. Even at the time of Omar, radiallahu anhu, when the Muslims had gone into Egypt, the river Nile, not her Neo, dried up, almost like there was no, almost no water, and it was supposed to be the time of the year of the water. It didn't come. And they were saying, oh, man, this is a big problem. Now we got these Muslims here, and now, see, we don't have any water. So, you know, we got to go back to our old way. And their old way, even though they were Christians, by the way, their old way was every year, let's throw a girl into the Nile River. Throw some girls in the Nile River, let them drown, and when they're dead, okay, then we're going to get the water to run again. They were sacrificing to the God of the river. Yeah, but the Muslims forbid them and told them, no, you can't do that. They wouldn't let them do that. Amr ibn al-As told them, no way, Ray, I'm not going to let you throw any women in this river. But the people kept complaining. They said, yeah, but look, look, there's a proof. We need to throw some girls in there. Amr ibn al-As sent a message to Omar radiallahu anhu. He said, oh, river, huh? if you are under the control of Allah, then come on and run on. But if you're under some kind of like magic or you have your own control, then stay where you are. We don't need you. And of course, what happened? Allah made the water run and run, and it still runs until today. The message that we get from this is that there's a lot of superstition out there. People do things thinking it will help them, but it really won't. What's your question? When, when the, in the time when the Nile dried up, so when they drowned one girl in the water, and afterward the, water, the Nile filled up, so they will, they will again think that because we throw the girl, the water came, and again they will follow. So what they did afterwards? Actually, what you said right there is a very important statement. Very important. You see, it's only a law that controls, but he tests people, doesn't he? So he knows what's inside of people's hearts. He knows that they want to disbelieve in him. So he makes it easy for you to believe if you want to believe, but he makes it easy for the disbelievers to disbelieve if they want to. Allah can make things happen. And so some people might say, well, you know, if I get out of the bed on the left side every day, I'll make money. But if I get out on the right side of the bed, I'm going to lose money. So what Allah is going to do? Any day he gets out on the left side, Allah will give him money. He'll say, oh, oh, wow. And on the day he gets out on the right side, he'll lose money. And then what will happen? He'll say, oh, man, this bed is important to me. Huh? And how I get out of this bed is everything. But it has nothing to do with it. It all comes from Allah. No matter how many times he gets out on the left side or the right side, whatever he gets is not from the bed, it's from Allah. Yes or no? Yes. Sometimes when you're walking on a sidewalk, you see these cracks, the cracks on the sidewalk. And somebody tell you, oh, if you step on this crack, it's bad luck for you. So you have to step over the crack. I remember when I was a child, they used to say, step on the crack, break your mother's back. In something horrible like this, you know. <laughs> but it's stupid. So one day I decided, well, I'm going to step on the crack and see what happens. I went home, and my mother came home from teaching. She was a school teacher. When she came home, she said, you know, my back's been bothering me all day. I said, oh, my God, oh, my God, what did I do to my poor mother? Oh, oh, oh. And I told her what I did. I'm sorry, mother. I stepped on a crack. And, I, and she was... By the way, she said, even though she wasn't Muslim, she understood from Christian, that doesn't mean anything. She said, that's superstition. She said, I've had a back problem for a long time. Did you step on a crack yesterday? I said, no. She said, I had a pain yesterday, and you didn't step on it, so don't worry about it. I said, oh, okay. 
Some people believe in things like that. They look at the stars and they say, okay, when that star moves over there, it's going to be like so-and-so. And when the moon is over here, such and such, and this and this, and they act like they know everything, you know? They even write books about it and they tell people, oh, come to me and I will tell you how to have good fortune and good luck. I'll tell you how to have many children or to have a good position. Just come to me and I'm going to tell you do this and do that. You're born on such a day. You're born at such a time and such a place and this and this and that. And they complicate things very much. But what is it? Zippo. Nothing. There's nothing. Some people believe in colors. I heard about a religion of colors that people believe like red. This is the color of war. If you wear it, you're going to have all kind of things happen all day. It's going to be like really crazy stuff. It's going to be, you know, people fighting and everything. You're wearing red. Oh, my God, i got to fight with you. <laughs> what is this? What is that? Or if you wear blue, it's like a cool color. It's going to be like laid back. Okay, he's wearing blue. Okay, he's a cool dude. <laughs> what is this? If you wear black, it's like real serious, intellectual. They had all kind of crazy stuff. I don't know if that's exactly what they had. But then I heard somebody tell it about numbers. They said, this number means this. One is the prime number. Two is doubled up. Three, that's a perfect trinity, blah, blah, blah. Somebody said four is a magic number because it means the family, blah, blah, blah. And I said, what is this stuff you're telling me? I used to have a book. I had this book and it had all these weird things in it. I used to read that book and say, hmm, maybe this, maybe that, you know? But all of it is nothing in front of Allah. This is bad. It becomes what? This is what Allah tells us to stay away from, called shirk. Avoid that at all costs. Man, that was a good question you brought up. But by the way, I want to tell you one more thing. One time there was a famous debate between a Muslim and a Christian. At the end of the debate, the Christian said, Oh, you know, there was somebody, and he wanted to be a Muslim, but he had cancer, and he said, Oh, Muhammad, cure my cancer, cure my cancer, and it didn't get cured. And then he said, oh, Jesus, cure my cancer, cure my cancer, and it got cured. So he said, I guess Jesus' belief is better. The Muslim should have said, excuse me, we don't ask Muhammad anything. We ask Allah. And if the person had asked Allah, then it would be up to Allah to cure him or not cure him, but at least he would be in the right belief. But whoever asks a human being, whether it's Muhammad, peace be upon him, or Jesus, peace be upon him, it doesn't matter. You can't ask them. You can only ask Allah. It's one thing, by the way, to be punished in this life, and it's quite another matter, the punishment that comes in the next life to the disbelievers, and it's even worse than anything here. And one of the things we know about this is that whoever is believing in Allah and doing what Allah wants them to do, Allah will make it easy for them here, and definitely it will be better for them in the next life. And this is a good place for us to take some time and think about what we've been talking about. So I will say to you the greeting and listen for it back. Assalamu alaikum. Wa